is Ubuntu 1904 one of the best releases of Ubuntu yet? Well, of course it can't be because it's only an interim release, but actually I would say it is one of the best releases. As long as you're happy to reinstall or upgrade after nine months. Yes, that is a catch. It is obviously going to be better in certain circumstances to install an operating system that will be supported for five years rather than one that will be supported for nine months. But on the other hand, all the derivatives seem to work absolutely perfectly. The performance of the GNOME desktop for Ubuntu is so much better. The performance of the KDE desktop with NVIDIA proprietary drivers is so much better. Like, it is perfect. I didn't think it could be perfect. I thought it was good, but now, perfect. Although, maybe I shouldn't have said perfect because it might get even better next time. Then I'll be uh, a liar, won't I? I would be a liar for saying it's perfect when it could be better. Oh well. <laughs> Yeah, the performance is so much better. So yeah, a lot of the work has gone into the underlying OS. And that also includes improvements on the kernel as well. So yeah, it will affect a lot of the underlying operating system. And actually, yeah, the Linux kernel 5 is supposedly a lot better for AMD graphics card users, slightly better for proprietary NVIDIA users as well. It hasn't been anything too much interesting in it. And there was a bit of a fix for the Ubuntu Mate derivative that I looked at and said that um, yeah for the Raspberry Pi the the driver is built in now for the touchscreen. Yeah great for that. The Ubuntu Mate does focus a bit more on the older lightweight systems. Yeah. And that is something I will have to mention here for lightweight older systems. Ubuntu 1904 is absolutely no good. There is no 32-bit version. As long as your older system is 64-bit you're fine. Or it's Raspberry Pi, yeah, then for Ubuntu Mate, you're fine. 32-bit support, no, that's gone now. Ubuntu is not unique in this situation. A lot, lot of the other distributions are heading this way as well. Arch Linux has gone. Arch Linux, uh, they've got rid of the 32-bit support. So yeah, for that situation, you're stuck with Ubuntu 18.04. So yeah, you've got five years. Um, yeah, when was the last 32-bit system made? I know the last 32-bit system I own is, well long since in a landfill site thoroughly decomposing, so am I bothered? Personally, no. I know, I've no doubt that there are 32-bit systems still in use and people complaining, why can't I use my old 32-bit system for longer? Take a look through the change log of Ubuntu 1904. Now I know normally I would be doing a review of all distributions, but it seems very hard to do a review when, as I said, not much has changed. So the Ubuntu desktop, so that's upgraded to GNOME 3.32, so that brings a lot of improvements to the underlying OS that it feels faster and more responsive. And indeed, it does feel faster and more responsive. The Wayland session can be scaled, although the default session is the Xorg. There's some changes to the system settings. You've got up-to-date versions of software, although you could have the up-to-date version of LibreOffice with a snap, and that's actually what I do in Kubuntu. So I installed the minimal version of Kubuntu and then installed a snap version of LibreOffice. So I'll get continuous updates of LibreOffice. Although it is a downside with the snap support, it quite frankly looks awful in a lot of the derivatives. I think KDE gets the best view because at least I have consistent styling. Although the mouse cursor is plain and boring. So yeah, it's a different mouse cursor there. Ubuntu server, and that specifies some of the up-to-date versions of the packages. I was actually using a copy of Ubuntu Server at the pre-alpha stage, and that server is working perfectly. No problems whatsoever. There's just quite a long list of changes there that really aren't hugely relevant. A lot of it is newer software, and that is something you'll come to expect. Oh, there is mention about wireless drivers, and that does remind me. I did see a comment from someone saying that their wireless drivers do work a lot better now. They've got a faster speed out of it. The Zubuntu release has seen a newer desktop, so we've got XFCE 4.13 and some components of the upcoming XFCE 4.14 desktop. But that's the extent of the change log, one page. Kubuntu with the Plasma 5.15 desktop, and a lot of the focus on this release was fixing bugs. So nothing really too much with changes. But we do have the option of using Wayland, although it's not officially supported. One of the problems for me has been within KDN Live. Although, to be honest, the rots with this started a couple of versions ago when I was using it with KDE Neon. It was with the KDE apps version 18.12.2. It all started going wrong with the stability, and I was getting echoes every time I cut the track. So yeah, one of those videos I did was absolutely awful, and that was because of the newer version of KDE Live. 
But I've seen they released a new version of the KDE apps, version 19.4. So I will have to try that out and hopefully they've improved the stability. I know they've added a lot of new features, but as long as they've got the core components right, I'll be happy. The Lubuntu changes might be slightly more impressive, although they switched to using the LXQ desktop back at a version 18.10. So this is the second release with the LXQ desktop. So it does mention a few uplifted applications. The installer though, they use the Calamari's installer. I'd love to know why they use a different installer compared to all the other derivatives which use the Ubiquity installer. Because one feature it is missing is the minimal install option. I noticed that the ISO size has crept up a bit, it's now 1.5 gig in size. Not exactly minimal anymore now, but actually in resource usage it is still fairly minimal and responsive. Ubuntu Budgie, well, um, yeah. If your change log is going to be new default wallpaper, I'm not exactly that impressed. A change in fonts, they switch browser from Chromium to Firefox. I do see Firefox as a default browser quite often. I've got nothing against that, I use it as my main browser, but I also use Chromium as well. The changelog does go on a bit further, but it's just detailing some small changes with Budgie Desktop, and a few pictures of some of the applets as well. Having had a quick glance at the desktop though, I don't really see a huge number of changes to it. Ubuntu Kylin, well, I've not looked at this one. This is a Chinese version of the Ubuntu desktop. So, in competition with Deepin OS, or just Linux Deepin these days, isn't it? So they go for the WPS Office, which does make sense because WPS Office is created in China. Ubuntu Mate, well now I have reviewed this. Yeah, not a huge number of changes, they've gone from the Mate desktop version 1.20. They missed out on going to the 1.22 just because there's been quite a lot more changes and... They've chosen for stability's sake to go with uh, the 1.20 desktop. They do mention about the GPD Pocket, although I thought that was new, but I did look at a previous video afterwards and noticed that they had announced the GPD Pocket ISO back in version 18.10. So my mistake there, thinking it was new. The newest release of applications, yes. There is a change on the driver installer. It is more intelligent now on the NVIDIA drivers, so if you've got an older card it will choose the older 390 drivers, and if you've got a newer card it will choose the newer 418 drivers, or 418 at the time of recording. The response in this to the GNOME desktop certainly has improved. There's been a few changes to the styling in Ubuntu, the Yaru theme. Nothing too noticeable though, it still looks um, pretty similar to how it did in the previous version. These are the changes in the control panel and how it, um, it's meant to look slightly better now. You know, so I, I don't really notice a huge amount of difference here. This just seems usable to me. So yeah, no complaints really. We got the customization of the dock. Yeah, you can move that around. The Ubuntu Software Center recommends Snap applications over the dev packages. Whenever you search for anything, it recommends the Snap over and above the dev package. And we can see that with the sizing. So we have, come on, if you want to scroll down properly, 14 meg at the bottom, so that's the dev package, and the snap application at the top, so yeah, that was uh, 182 meg. I'll show you the problems with the theming on the snap applications. Yeah, sorry about the glitches here, this is a VirtualBox issue. Actually, I don't know why it is a VirtualBox issue in general, this seems to be a VirtualBox issue in Linux, because running it in VirtualBox in Windows, no problems at all. Anyway, the theming here just looks awful but at least the mouse cursor is like the rest of the desktop. I'd rather have the ugly mouse cursor and consistent menus if I do have to make a choice. How to add an extension for desktop icons. Yeah, it just seems bizarre to me that they've had to do that. For Zubuntu, what are the changes? Ah, memory footprint slightly lower than Ubuntu Mate. 448 meg compared to 470. Or was it 480 for Ubuntu Mate? Slightly lower, but not by much. The reminder that that's the Linux 5 kernel, and we have Mesa 19.0.2. Looking at the rest of Ubuntu, the performance is really fast and responsive, very snappy at opening applications. Theming is, well, they've probably done the best with what they can. Got a slight gradient effect, slight curved effect, so it doesn't look too flat and boring. Anyway, the application launcher, the whisker menu, it can be resized. You have to click to select on the different menus here. Although you can type to search for an application, and yeah, that does come up with the results really quickly. So opening up LibreOffice Writer, yeah, reasonable enough. 
The XFC desktop is reasonably customizable. Got a few different options for the appearance, as well as the icons, the font. Oh look, another derivative that has gone for the Noto font. So yeah, a lot of them seem to have abandoned the Ubuntu font, which is understandable since not much work has been done on it since it was created a few years ago, whereas the number of Unicode characters has expanded rather substantially. So it is lacking quite a lot of characters now. Overall, there's not too many changes with the XFC desktop, but as I mentioned, I don't really see that as a bad thing. It just means that this derivative and desktop environment are going to be nice and stable. Ubuntu Mate is the best of all the derivatives for new users. You've got nice features like the welcome screen, basic software center, just recommend some of the best of the open source applications, or very much a simpler choice of the open source applications, even if you want to argue it's not the best choices. We also get a look switcher as well. So if you look for the Mate tweak tool, you've got a panel and you've got a few different panel layouts that you can choose from. So if you're a fan of the old Unity desktop, you do have that option. Or if you prefer Windows layout, Windows 7 layout, you have that option as well. So yeah, a few different choices on the look switcher. Actually go for a traditional one, that will be like the GNOME Classic desktop. So minus the application searcher on this one. The Kaha file manager is forked from an older copy of Nautilus, so it retains more features. And does not need any special extensions to add icons to the desktop. Lubuntu moves across to the LXQ desktop. It's very fast and responsive, very reminiscent to the LXDE desktop. Looks like I changed some of the styling slightly, We've got a little uh, blue border around the application. The application launcher has a searcher and it's fast and responsive enough just to hover over the menus. So yeah, if I was looking for, um, oh, I was about to say LibreOffice Writer, but I'm hovering right over it, so yeah. Ah, the searchiness is a bit weird, you actually have to select it before you can start typing. Yeah, LibreOffice Write. The theming is consistent enough throughout. It actually reminds me of the Kubuntu theming as well. So you've got the light color in the application menus and a darker color in the application launcher. And finally, we have Ubuntu Budgie. Hmm, seems slightly slower in performance than all the other desktops so far. Not a huge amount though, I don't think. I'll open up an application from the application menu launcher. You can't just hover over and select an application. No, you do actually have to select them. And let's open up files as well. Yeah, it does seem to be a bit all over the place on the theming here. Nice style on text boxes though. And you'll notice that at the system installer. But yeah, where's the menu there? Actually, I'm not sure it has one. Maybe it doesn't have one. Let's have a text editor instead. Okay. Oh, it's all over the place on the menu sizing. Yeah, still some of these issues and that's more from the GNOME desktop. At least the theming is consistent, even if the application title bar size is all a bit off. Yeah, performance wise, I think Budgie doesn't seem to be as good as the other desktops, but that is an issue isolated to one particular derivative. So looking at the Raven menu here on the right hand side, yeah. Now to do a comparison of all the memory usages, starting with the highest, we have Ubuntu at 697 meg. And in the second place, it is Budgie at 666 meg. Third place goes to Ubuntu Mate. During the review, I had it around 480, but this time around it has crept up. Let's try one more time. Yeah, it's gradually coming down, but not as low as I had it during the review. So yeah, 486 meg this time around. And Zubuntu at 472 meg. And the lowest is Lubuntu at 342. Now there is one I have missed out there, the Kubuntu derivative. Yes, what was it? Um, well, I could look at my own system. We have a whopping 17 gig of RAM in use. Oh, that's not fair at all, is it? I've got all those operating systems running. Well, no, the figure I had was about 420 meg. So that put Kubuntu in second highest. So yeah, it is the Qt desktops that are the lowest and the GTK desktops that are the highest. Anyway, that's it. I do think Ubuntu 1904 is a really good release, even if it is just an interim release. And that's purely because a lot of the focus has been on fixing bugs and improving performance. Yeah, and for that, I really can't complain about. So thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.